Republican Congressman from New York, Tom Reed, with us. Congressman, thank you very much for being here. You're part of the Problem Solvers Caucus. This we is a problem that needs <laughs> to be solved. I do want to just read out your voting record so far on, the, on ending the shutdown. You voted against the House bills to end the partial government shutdown because they could not, as you said, get 60 votes in the Senate. You voted no every single time without when a bill does not have funding for the wall. You voted no to fund federal agencies affected by the shutdown. You voted no to fund disaster relief money and funding the government through February 8th without money for a border wall. How, how does that solve a problem? Uh, the, it solves a problem by recognizing what those votes are is just political cover or political theater. Uh, what we're looking for is a bill that can make its way through the Senate and get signed by the president to alleviate this concern. And we in the Problem Solvers Caucus, we were the only bipartisan group so far that's met with the White House, sat in the Situation Room, Democrats and Republicans talking and listening to each other. And I tell you, we had a great conversation there. I hope the Senate today takes these votes and recognizes they need to get to 60, get to 60 votes send it to the House and let's vote on this and both move forward. Both of these forward. votes, both of these, these proposals are going to fail. Absolutely. And that what shows will you do after that? And, and if, are you going to live up to the name Problem Solvers Caucus? Because it seems a bit disingenuous to say, hey, listen, no one's compromising when you haven't compromised at all. Oh, that's absolutely not true. Uh, we have put, two, we were the only ones, Democrats or Republicans, that went to the White House. Went you to know, the right White House. Now, you voted no on everything. Well, these are all show votes in the House. These are all political posturing votes uh, in the House. We've uh, supported motions to recommit uh, that we supported on our side. Democrats have opposed. So these are all political posturing votes in the House. What fundamentally matters is now what can the Senate do? Can the Senate get to 60 votes on a package? My hope is they can, and I'll be here leading the charge on the Republican side with my colleagues who are about getting something done and solving this problem. We will more than willing, I think, put our vote up once we get the 60 votes out of the Senate this and get this to the White House. This problem was created by Donald Trump. This problem didn't exist before the shutdown. It didn't exist before Christmas vacation. The House voted, the Senate voted, to pass a clean CR. Those things, were, those things were going to the president. The president said he would not sign them. They were on their way to the president, let me say. The president had said he would not sign it. He threw a wrench into this entire process. He created this problem. Do you not and see this as something the president created, or do you believe that this is something the Democrats are creating after the no, fact. Now, this is something I can agree with you on, that uh, getting here should never have been the case. Uh, I was willing to support that CR, continuing the debate on border security, because we got to fix the border at the same time. And Democrats and Republicans both know we have to solve that problem. Uh, but the reality is we are here. We are here at this point. Now, how do we get out of here? That's what I'm trying to do my part, to be a voice of get in a room and at least talk to each other. And that isn't even happening between Nancy Pelosi and the White House. And the White House has put something on the table. Where's the counteroffer? That's what we need to hear from the Democratic leadership in the House. Democrats have put a counteroffer, or they're putting together a counteroffer, that would offer $5.6 billion, somewhere around there, potentially more, for border security, including what they're calling potentially a smart wall. Um, is that something that you can get behind? That's a lot more money for border security. And when you look at the numbers from CBP, when you look at the numbers from DHS, the majority of, of drugs that are coming across the border go through legal ports of entry. That's money that could go to legal ports of entry to beef up security there, beef up inspections there. Uh, when you talk about who is coming into the country illegally and staying, a lot of those are visa overstays. That can go to, to money to, to help find those people and get them out, as opposed to paying for a small portion of a wall. $5.6 billion is not that much. I mean, isn't it a win to say, hey, I'm going to take all this other money, money for, for other border security measures that will be pretty effective? Now, and I think you're referring to what I think Jim Clyburn has put out as a potential uh, discussion point for us to consider. Now we're having a substantive conversation. That is getting us closer. That type of investment, smart wall technology, port of entry uh, reform when it comes to border security, absolutely. Now we're getting closer to where reality is that can get 60 votes in the Senate and get the White House to sign it, it into law.